okay so last class all whatever we had discussed i hope everyone has uh, practiced uh, at home so today we'll see advanced one like network volume and uh, how to you know persist the data container data and uh, see what happens when uh, this is actually interview questions and uh, so real time you have to understand how the container works exactly okay the thing is when a container runs right so we put all the required libraries binaries and the required data required files whatever the applications required to run inside a container so the thing is when a container dies when a container terminated unexpectedly or due to some bug or something when a container dies what will happen the data inside the container right the data inside the container if you remove that container or terminate the container what will happen it will be erased okay but how we can persist those data how we can persist those data so that it can be used right that most important because when a container is having the application the application will generate lots of logs right it will have lots of dependencies lots of um, uh, binary files or libraries required for that applications to run sometimes what happens you need those details to be persist save locally or on a server we'll see today how we can create a volume and how we can save and persist those data okay also what we'll see um, how the networks be uh been uh, added into the docker container how we can uh, know, um, see more details about the network so let me first uh, speak about the networks things and then we'll move into the volume part okay let me share my screen uh, uh, ranjit i came to know uh, jitu you got selected in some of the company I saw your status. Yeah, yeah. So he got actually he has he is having now two offers in his hand. So so he is the first person I think in this batch uh, to get a quick job immediately. Uh, even uh, before finishing the course itself, he got two offers in his hand. Yeah, correct. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's good, and I hope everyone actually practicing. Uh, actually, see. what of the dedication he showed actually that is tremendous okay uh, because without that you cannot touch it that is the first thing even though you do one year of course lots of tutorials lots of videos lots of uh, uh, talented uh, professor if you get also if you don't show your own dedication you will not get it so that's why actually he was so uh, dedicated uh, towards his learning and uh, to achieve something right so that's why he got it very quickly Uh, we have to give time at least to one hour two hours a day we all are working from home so we'll have sufficient time at least for your own growth you can give it that's what he gave it and uh, he got immediately and uh, congrats jitu uh, he is not there in this class so okay guys um, let's start uh, uh, so last class what we saw about uh, creating containers and playing around it right so let me see what are the default images uh, they are in my local machine so i can quickly do it uh, docker image ls so i have only one image currently on my machine okay so let me see uh, is there any container running or exist container ls hyphen a uh one second What is Docker container spelling mistake? Container spelling. Container. Okay, so okay, so ha we have only one. Let me terminate this. Okay. Okay, fine. Let it be there. So before moving to the network command, so let me show you uh, one more interesting thing. Uh, sometimes what happens um, in your real time, what you have to do, you have to create one ad hoc container. So what is the ad hoc? the things is uh, whenever you need something uh, to uh, do immediately and after that you don't need that
okay uh, sorry for the delay okay so uh, what will happen here uh, suppose the ad hoc containers or sometimes you need uh, some containers which you want uh, to be the result to be displayed after that you don't need the container to be exist in the system so what you have to do in that case you have to just while creating the container right suppose let me just um, show you one hello world again um, container so what you have to do just use docker container okay management command and while using run command you have to pass hyphen hyphen rm option okay hyphen hyphen rm option and uh, then what do you do just give a name to that suppose uh, i'll just give a name uh, my so hello docker this is the container name okay then just give the image name the image suppose i'm giving simple hello world to show you the uh, details okay so hello world so what will do uh, what it will do actually when we execute it it will create a container and it will just display the result okay okay let me do that uh, before okay first let me show you without giving rm option so what will happen it will just display see it just pulled the latest image hello world and uh, now it displayed hello from docker okay now once it display the result what will happen it will just create one container right the container will be exited immediately it will be dies immediately okay so what will see let me show you the docker container ls hyphen yeah. so you can see here the hello world this container the name whatever we had given hello docker this container is exist but it is exited the status is exited what happens here i suppose need this hello world to add a basis like i just need some output to be displayed or we need that output to be used by some other container sometimes you may need that and after that you don't want this container to be stayed here because this will be redundant now because you are not going to use anymore so in that case if you use docker while creating the container just use hyphen hyphen rm option hyphen hyphen rm so what it will do it will just create the container okay give us the result and then it will terminate the container and delete the container in the backend okay let's see that okay so what happens the name whatever is given already one container is exist right so let me just give change the name to docker one hit enter so what happens here it gave us the message it displayed whatever we need now if we check the container so what will happen nothing will be there that that one will be deleted whatever the container is just created it just displayed the result after that it will be deleted see we don't have this hello docker one it is deleted we have the previous two dog containers this is very important uh, guys uh, you may need uh, to when you add a basis just remember this option hyphen hyphen rm okay you have to provide it so that's all let me delete this container and uh, we'll just talk about the networks and all okay so what is the command to remove the containers docker container rm rm okay. rm yeah so if one command we oh sorry if one or two or five containers if you want to do manually one by one so you can just use docker container rm and then give the container id or container name then it will be deleted suppose what happens you have created other commands uh, suppose there are more or more than hundreds so more than uh, 15 containers or 50 containers are there uh, to deleting one by one it will take lots of time right to overcome that what we can do instead of giving single single we can use uh, in our last class also i had shown the same thing so we can use the regular pipes right pipe and then pass that output using the x x command okay this is a unix command x x so what i'm doing i'm just passing the output so before doing that i'm not going to delete here itself i'm going to do docker container ls hyphen q so what ls hyphen q will do it will display the container id it will display the container id so let me show that to you 
it will only display the okay why it did not display because there are no running containers run so we have to use a hyphen a q so what we can see here only container ids i want these two containers to be deleted and after that what i have to do i have to just pass to xrx okay then we can use docker is either container rm or docker rm okay so i just use docker container rm let's hit enter now this two deleted okay if we see just check the whether there's anything exists no all containers are so this is very useful command uh, you can make a note of this okay so container ls hyphen eq xx docker container rm so suppose more than 10 or 15 you don't no need to do it manually you can just simply use this command to remove all the redundant containers which are not required okay now what you can see Let's talk. for example uh, yeah. Aranjit, uh, for example there is 50 containers are there yeah. from there you want to delete uh, 10 to 20 containers. that means that unique id from 10 to 15 something then uh, how you have to specify the uh, this um, means what is the tag name or a container name or how it will be see uh, that's a very good question actually suppose uh, you have to delete 15 containers right first of all uh, for that what you have to do you have to write some little scripts okay first you have to just get down the container id which are not required that you have to do it manually there is no other option okay. you have to specify few containers to delete and then uh, mm -hmm. so if you use this one it will delete everything right it will delete uh, whatever the yeah, yeah. are there it will delete everything and uh, if you want to see more options about that you can find it out containers which are not running you can find out the container which are not running so just use hyphen hyphen help option you'll find the hyphen a means uh, like in Unix, it is all. it will it will display us hidden files, but in here it will give it will give us all. Okay, and here hyphen f will filter filter out based on the condition provided. Okay, suppose if you want to give the some condition hyphen f or f option, and then you can give the latest one. If you show the latest created container hyphen l, uh, only display the container IDs right hyphen q. The display total file size of the container used that you can get it here. Ranjit. Yes. Okay. For example, uh, okay, if we, if we want to be delete uh, some specific containers, uh, means you no, know, we have to be put uh, that ID with uh, one file, and we can uh, remove that file so that it will be specific container will be deleted, right? Yes. Okay. For example, uh, for for others, you know, for example, we uh, deleted some container and. Uh, uh, is it possible to through image we can create again through this kind of container? Yes, yes. Uh, That's why the container actually is a runtime object, right? As long as you have that image, you can create n number of containers. Suppose that in container deleted, you can immediately you have to use that image to create another container. That I'll show you uh, in this example also. I'll show you because. See, sometimes what happens accidentally terminated or some uh, box are there and you are not able to fix it. You have to recreate the container, right? You have to recreate the container. Uh, so let me just uh, do the same thing, whatever Ranjit just told. Uh, I'll just recreate this scenario. I uh, will delete it and immediately create to using the same image. So if we see here, Ranjit, we have our image. If I do image LS, we have this image, HTTPD image because using this image you can create n number of containers based on your resource availability when i say n number of containers but that n number of containers is totally dependent based on your system resource available okay if your system does not have that much resource then you cannot create a number you can your system suppose supporting only 10 containers after that it will be exhausted the memory the memory will not be there then you cannot create it because it will so out of memory right so you can use it let me just do small example here first okay i'm going to create one container okay let me just do that docker container so okay so i want to run this in the back end so what is the option i should use 
I want the container to run in the back end. That M present they should use M, M present, I think, to no. run in back end. That is the Unix command. So I'm going to use hyphen D okay. detached mode. Okay. It, it will be not attached to the terminal. Remember, it will be in the detached mode. The hyphen D is a detached mode. Then you have to give a name. Suppose I give as my wave app. Okay. Then I have to, as it is a web application, I need to access through the browser. Okay. Through the browser. What I have to do? I have to publish the port of the container to the host port. Because from the host, from the other server, I'm going to connect it, the container. Then we have to just publish the container port to the host port. Okay. What, what option I should use? Hyphen P to publish. Or if you want to write, you can write publish. Hyphen hyphen publish. Okay. But I just use the short form hyphen P. Then first one is the 80. 80. So what is this 80? This 80 is nothing but your host port. And this is host. the container port. Okay. So you'll be, uh, if you're in your mind coming, why 80? Because the default port being used by Apache web server is 80. Okay. Now I have to use HTTPD and the version of the image. What is it? 2.4.52. This is the image version and the tag is available in my local machine. Okay. Now if I hit enter, what will happen? It will just create image. Uh, sorry, it will create just a container and it will publish the port 80. Okay. So just let me do that. So it just created a container. Okay. Let me access this container from the outside. Okay. So how I'll do it? Let's copy this. Paste it here. Let's see. Hit enter. Now we can see it works. Okay. If you see in the last class, we had created our own application. We had modified the index.html file, but that is now not available. So we want to persist that somewhere locally in the host machine. How we'll do that? I'll show you that one. Okay. First, uh, finish the Ranjit's uh, uh, question. Okay. Now we have this container is running. Okay. Because our container is running and we can able to access it. Suppose what will happen? If something happens to that and it is now broken or terminated. Okay. So let me just terminate this. I can quickly forcefully terminate this container. Because if a container is running, you cannot terminate it. You have to either forcefully terminate it or you have to stop it and then terminate it. Okay. Then I just use rm-f with the container ID. Hit enter. So this container is now terminated. If I refresh it, see the container is now died. Now the point is how we can get the same container again. How we can get the same container again. How we have to just execute the again run command using the same image, using the same image, same tag. Because real time in your organization, you have to be make sure and you have to be carefully use the version or tag because your current product version or application version is 2.4.52 if you by mistake given some other version then it will create a different application which is wrong in the that will be a huge production issue right so you have to make sure that which image you are going to use it now hit enter the container is now created if i refresh it the same application will be running now see container is running now we'll have that container is now container ls this container is running okay yes okay uh, that's great uh, so now let's see last class i showed you to inspect a container right so if you inspect a container, let, let's just go and brief about this one. Let's see what is there if we inspect the container. A small doubt. Yeah, please. Small doubt, Ranjit. Yes. Uh, suppose uh, for testing purpose or anything, 
i have created more than uh, past two weeks i have been creating some containers mm -hmm. so i would like to delete all the containers which are created one week old i want i don't want all the containers i want uh, containers to be created which is one week old only mm -hmm. so for that do we need to write any script or can we do it in manual yeah so yeah so you can write the script okay so you can write the script so you have to write this uh, cell script uh, you know how you can pass this argument right like i did it using the xr unix command the same things you can try rewrite uh, you can pass the container you can get it from the created right when it was created by filtering it out you can find it out all the details and you can use the small script to delete everything i have a script i'll show you how i have written it okay i have a script i'll show you how i have written it to remove the containers and remove the unwanted containers um, from the machine okay i am doing same thing in jenkins ranjit actually before means uh, last one week recent only we are using the binary before that we can deleting okay that's good thing jenkins configure yeah. jenkins configurations you can do it yeah. whatever we are doing see once this docker is over right i'll show you the jenkins configuration docker how we can execute it the same command yeah. whatever you are going to execute manually same thing you can put it in the jenkins and that will be executed uh, on the particular targeted machine it will be deleted deleted right so that you can do it yeah. yeah that's good thing so let me just inspect um this uh container and see what are the details are there and i'll just more explain on this okay. now if you see here we have this ip address these are the container ip addresses okay and the host port host port and all 80 and um, you can see here the network if you go to the network settings right you can you can see here the it is using the default network bridge okay default default network bridge and the volume null we have not specified any volumes okay so let me show you what is the networks available if i use docker container network you have to use the command network ls okay hit enter sorry you cannot use the container network because container is a management command again network also is a management command okay so instead container network you have to use only con docker network docker network ls okay docker network see docker container is a container is a container is a management command of docker similarly network also is a management command okay if i see here docker Hyphen hyphen help, right? See the management command network comes under this management command. Okay. Similarly, the volume also management command. What it does, it manages the volumes. Network it manages the networks. Okay. Now let's see what are the network details we can find it out. So when you see here, <coughs> it gives us the network ID, name of the network, which driver and the scope. Okay. So if you can see here, Docker network ls, it gives the bridge. Remember, default network used by the container is the bridge network. And this network is created when you install the Docker engine, that time it will be created by the Docker. And whenever you create container without specifying any network, it will by default use the bridge network. Okay, and if you want to create a network separately, that is uh, the networking part. Okay, and you should know how to use the network. One second. Yeah, please. For the network, what are the inbuilt uh, commands are there? That is uh, showing everything from the Docker, Docker Hub only, right? That is the Docker Hub where all the inbuilt command everything will be taken. So these, so, are, these are the details? Yes. Yeah, it's not from the Docker Hub actually. We are getting this actually in Unix. Uh, we have seen that there will be some manual pages in Unix. There will be some manual places up there in seconds. Okay. So what actually Docker Hub uh, Tom's uh, is using, right? So it was already kind of set of uh, command set of uh, things will be there, or it will be created by user. 
how it will be what the concept of doctor how actually uh, okay <clears throat> so you you are saying like this these details we are getting it from the docker how right so what is the docker hub actually it is these details not getting from the docker hub from where it is getting it is from the manual page of docker install when we install docker right that time it contains the manual page of docker okay so when we give docker command and we pass this argument hyphen hyphen help it will just display us the docker how we can use the docker docker uses all the command list like similarly right if you do man ls in unix what it will do it will give the manual page of ls command it will give the manual page of ls command similarly in docker what command you want to just get the details about that command you can just use the argument called as hyphen hyphen help docker just give the command name or simple docker hyphen hyphen help it will give the entire command list of the docker okay what is the docker hub guys i already have told you many times what is docker hub here yeah, and this it should be uh, means all the documentation all the means uh, site where we can uh, get help from the docker no suppose uh, suppose i have i am going to be uh, no uh, some ubuntu or some application going to be installed or take this to be my container so those things uh, usually have to be taken uh, things from the docker hub i can uh, uh, assume that all. is this correct to me um that is rendit uh, it's a database uh, where we can get, get all the uh, means uh, we are registering no? so uh, image uh, think, images we can uh, uh, fetch from there okay i think docker hub is a cloud repository of the docker images right exactly so it is actually cloud repository docker hub okay it stores all the binary files that is the images okay or it stores all the images whatever image you need you can get it from the docker hub it does not contain anything else it contains the images only in built images or if you want to create your own image and want to store it to the docker hub then you have to create an account and put it in the docker hub you can store that's what i had initially told you to register in the docker hub it is hub.docker.com okay so you can store all your images and you can find it all the images what happens in uh, docker hub see docker hub is the world's easiest way to create manage and deliver your teams container applications it also helps us to store like the repository systems docker hub, uh, github right github we are using the git commands locally to store all our codes and uh, files and uh, projects right same thing we are storing in the github that is a remote uh, sorry uh, that is a, a remote cloud based solution right to store on the remote repository similarly docker for docker we have the docker hub where we store all our images the binaries okay and for documentations whatever we need that is docker hub always you can go for doc.docker dot com yeah yeah doc com yeah i'm correct there is confusion yeah yeah thank you docs sorry docs dot docker docs. find all the document that's that this also i showed you right you can get all the installation page whatever how to install it and the manuals okay guides everything you'll find the reference everything you can find it over here okay so if you want to learn something uh, basics command and you can find it our all this how we can get it all these details are there okay all these details are there so here if you want to see what is a container now um but it says simply put a container and okay you will not understand all that whatever is written the simple way is just you understand the container is a runnable instance of an image you can create start stop move or whatever the containers you have can be run on local machines virtual machines deployed on the cloud so container what container container is a runtime object or in, uh, you can say is an instance of an image which holds the applications 
whatever the applications and your um, product or whatever the applications you want to run it will execute that one okay and it will create a container so container actually simplify the process of create okay um, design create develop and ship anywhere that means you it will not depend on the on the any machines you can create a container you can draw whatever machine you use to create a container that does not matter just create the container build it and send it to any machine and it will work send it to any machine and it will work i'll just show you a quick example okay i'll show you a quick example of that when i used docker run and the httpd right that httpd is the image the apache server i used the httpd 2.4.52 that is the image version I used in my machine to run. So when I executed that one, it worked on my machine. Even in my machine, suppose I have this Ubuntu machine. And if you're running on CentOS machine, if you're running on the Windows machine, the container, same container will work. How? Because the container does not depend on the system's OS. OS. It has their own OS inside and the container is having all the required libraries binaries inside it that's why the application will only depend on the containers what it contains okay and what are the recipes and templates being retained in the images that is what i had clearly explained in the my first class right so you have to first understand why you are using the container and what is the benefit that's why i just took the first class to explain all these things right uh, then you can just go and play around with if you don't understand clearly what you are doing and uh, simply executing the command that will not help you these commands are very easy you can find it in the google and you can find it in the manual page and documentation you can um, type the commands but if you don't understand what exactly you are going to do it it will not help you okay first understand what is that what the container is having and why you need them to execute this command if you understand that then it will be easy for you to learn it okay so the first thing is follow these documentations okay uh, follow this uh, docker's orientation uh, anyway do, just go for docs.docker.com and you'll find all these informations how to install it all the guides all the manual pages all the get started all the books docker books you can find it over here but if you understand how to use it then it will be beneficial for you if you don't understand the basic concept of docker then even though you read it it will not help you okay fine um, uh, Ranjit, yeah one small doubt mm -hmm. for example uh, some scenario like that okay you are using the git okay yes. git and google repo you are using okay and um, uh, in google repo you are your repository all the things are there okay for uh, uh, for build you are using jenkin okay yes, yes. and uh, uh, you, for deploying uh, you are also using jenkin for example yes. for binary deploying okay. for testing uh, selenium also using mm -hmm. now uh, we want to announcement that uh, this scenario mm -hmm. we, we want to use the docker there mm -hmm. for example then what the new difference will come from uh, uh, what is the existing one how can we can see that one means you are going to use docker docker we we want to implement in this scenario uh, all scenario is there but we we need to announcement that one to docker exactly how we can see the scenario yeah that's very good Juwan, and that's very good uh, real time example and uh, yeah yeah real time i'll show you that one right away okay so let's do that yeah. Okay, now we saw about the Apache server and all. Now let's do whatever is Shivram told now, we are going to do the same thing. Okay, how to achieve that? What will do? We got our requirement. Try to understand. Okay, just try to understand what Shivram is told. And um, we are going to make the same project here. What we need first, we need a container is having the Jenkins inside it, right? We don't need a Jenkins server outside or a server or a machine a different virtual machine or different cloud machine. Now we need a, our Jenkins to be inside the container. So what we have to do, the first thing is we need the Jenkins image, right? Which particular Jenkins version do you need 
to run the container. So what we can do, just search for the Jenkins. You'll find the official image of Jenkins. See, we have the Jenkins official image. This is this image can be used to create a container and that container can hold Jenkins. Okay, now just go here. And now you can find which version of Jenkins do you need to run. Um, by default, it will take the latest one and it has 2.60, 2.6 and all these details are there. Now, I want suppose the old version of Jenkins, suppose I need it. Let me get a different version of Jenkins. Okay. And uh, could not type the log courses. Okay. Okay. These are dedicated. Fine. I'll, I'll not go for more old. So, just go for... Uh, Okay, let me go with uh, uh, suppose I'll go with the 2.32.3 version of 2.32.3 version of Jenkins. Okay, so here you can find it the command docker pull commands and you can use it. Let me first delete out the container and the images existing images from the server because otherwise it will make use of the resources and it may be the jenkins may not work properly okay so let me first remove out the existing it takes some sizes right i have to remove it so what is the command docker image rm okay and what will happen here let it will throw error okay let me delete it Okay, so we have to give the tag 2.4.52. So it, as I said, it will say it will throw error because again, this is a question and this you need to understand. If a container is running, the container is running out of this image. This image is used to create a container and that container is currently running and exists. If a container is already exist, you cannot delete the image. Okay, so you have to first terminate the container and then release the image. Another way we can forcefully delete the image even though the container is there. Okay, now let me just first delete the container and then go to delete the image. Okay, I yeah. so we have one container is running. Okay, now I will quickly do that container rm. Open F. This is also I need to forcefully do it because the container is running. If I without using hyphen F, it will not allow me to delete. Okay, so I removed. Now I can use Docker rm command to. So the image is now deleted. Okay, I I don't want this hello world image also. Let me remove this hello world. Hello, what? What happened? Okay, I did not give option RM. Okay, now all images, all containers are now removed from the machine. Now let me do fresh create a Jenkins container. To create a container which will have the Jenkins application. So what I can use? I can use Docker container instead of two ways you can do. You can first pull the image to your local machine and then create the container. Or else you can directly execute the run command. What it will do? It will pull that image for you from the registry and then create the container. Okay. So I'm going to use container run hyphen D option. Let it run in the backend. Give a name to suppose I'll give that uh, my Jenkins or Jenkins server. I can give a name to Jenkins server. Jenkins server then give and you have to mostly publish that port so this is a question for you what is the default port of Jenkins guys 8080 okay so 8080 so I have to same 8080 container port I am just going to publish it to the host port 8080 host also I am going to use 8080 okay now what I am going to do here Give the image 
which image we are going to create the container. Just give the Jenkins image where you can find it out. You can find it out here. So, so this is the version suppose Jenkins 2.32.3. I'm going to use it. Okay. Now, so okay. So it copied everything. I don't need this. So what I used here, I used docker container run hyphen g hyphen hyphen name gave a name and published and used Jenkins 2.3.32.3 version of Jenkins. Hit enter. Unable to find image locally, then what it will do? It will pull it. Okay. So just wait for it. Based on your network uh, strength, it will just pull it and uh, create. Good. What happens here? So it created the container. So if we do here, Docker container ls. So our Jenkins server is now created and it is up. Now we can access our Jenkins server. How we can access this server, guys? We can access from the browser itself. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so just get the public IP, right? And uh, go here and it should be 8080. Okay, hit enter. See, Jenkins container now we can able to access it. So administrator password, so we can find this administrator password. So from where we can find it, var slash Jenkins home secrets initial admin password. So this is from where we can find it out guys then how we can find it this is also one very good interesting stop to know if i search locally so just do it uh, the file is not found where i can get this one guys yeah. anybody one of anyone from you can answer it it gives us yeah Ranjit, it should be from the uh, because the container inside container so we need to move in, into container exactly. and uh, get it from there exactly so we have to go inside the container and then get the password okay so what is the command to go inside the container last class i saw i told you what is the command to go I think uh, exe is you know execute exactly so, uh, you have uh -huh. to use docker container exec hyphen it interactively okay and then give the container id give the container id and then bin bus bin bus i'm just executing this bus command on this container okay what will happen now interactively it will be attached to the container terminal hit enter see now we are into Jenkins container inside the Jenkins container. Okay, now what do we need? Just do cat and the path. Okay. Just it here. See, we got it now. This is the password. Just give it here. Continue. Good. Install suggested plugin. Uh, select the plugins to install. Let me select the plugins to install. Eh, there are lots of things. Okay, now just install suggested plugins. An error occurred. Uh, an error occurred uh, during installation. No such plugins cloud base folder. An error occurred during the installation. No such plugin cloud base folder. Okay, then selected plugins. Achha. I'll simply install uh, only one plugin. Suppose uh, just give me a plugin name, guys. Which plugin do you want to install? Okay, uh, Ranjit, one thing this password uh, every time whenever you download the uh, this Jenkins image that time that password will be different or how it is 
for example time, we uh, terminate yes every time you create the container the password will be different the password will be different okay. okay so you install and create one jenkins that password admin that is administrative and administrator password right so that will be different also. okay <laughs> so i suppose want to use sss agent and i want uh, so build feature right uh, so maven tool is not there suppose i just want gradle or ant to be installed and um, pipeline something just this is for example right and git we need github we need right i'm just selecting and uh, windows slave ssh slave and uh, ssh okay let's install it the few i just installed okay just install. what it says only aunt why it says not available no such so ranjit is it like uh, sorry ranjit to interrupt yeah. it is like uh, this uh, our container it's not uh, connecting to the jenkin uh, server no? so where you can get the plugins is that the no this is the for that error no 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 it's not for the that error so what it says on error uh -huh. is installation no such plugin yeah, available and Get this. Yeah, we used to get this whenever we are installing the Jenkins first time. You are also getting the same. I used to stop the instance. Yeah, I used to stop the instance and uh, start. Then uh, sometimes it will work. Mm. Oh, restart, Bankard. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Because this is what uh, I observed. I uh -huh. because once you whatever the plug you means so image or something like that machine should be registered first i think okay let me do one thing let me just uh, restart the container okay let me stop it and start let's see if it is uh, mm -hmm. running or not so i just use docker container stop give the container id Skip the container. Stopping the container now. So container is stopped. If I refresh it, I will not find this. Okay. Now let me start the container. Start. Okay. Hit enter. Refresh it. It will take some time to start the container. Okay. So Docker container ls. Okay, it's running now. Let's refresh this page again. Your browser will reload automatically when Jenkins is ready. Okay, now is Jenkins is getting started. Okay, it's not it started fully. So it will take some time. Okay, now again you have to get the password. Okay. So, because we have not installed fully, right? It is not installed fully. So let's let me get uh, the password quickly. So what I have to do? Simple. Okay. So. No. Why it is failing? Uh, we are not able to install any plugins in the container. An error occurred during installation. No such plugins. Okay. We'll see that one. Uh, so, Bankard, in your case, what you did, you just restarted the instance and it worked, right? Sorry, I restarted my instance, EC2 instance. Okay, you restarted your EC2 instance and you worked. Okay, but because that is that was you had installed on your EC2 instances, that's why it worked. Okay. But if you uh, install in the yeah, container, yeah. then okay, that is no point of doing that. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, guys, maybe there is some issues with this, and uh, or I'm missing something where we're not able to start the 
do the plugin installation. But you now know how to I think the, right? To, uh, maybe the particular Jenkins, uh, like the person or whatever we are using. Or, uh, it may be, okay. It may be the version which is having some issues and you're not able to work in this container. Okay, yeah, that is fine. Uh, now you understood the basics, right? Uh, you understood how we can create the different container. Now with relate to the Sibram's question, we can create the Jenkins container. Nowadays, the companies are moving and creating, when they're moving to the microservices, their work. So there will be Docker and Kubernetes engineers will be there, right? DevOps engineers will be there who will be creating the application. They are containerizing the application. They're containerizing the applications with the microservices, right? So what we are going to achieve it here, we'll create a container and that will hold our application. That application is our Jenkins. Okay, and that Jenkins can be used and you can build whatever projects, whatever things you want, you can build it and you can transfer that to the different container also that you can do. Okay, so maybe um, I'll show you something. Let me try to uh, fix this error if anything, then maybe in our class I'll, once I'll just do the setup. So Jenkins, now you understood Sibram how we can do that, right? You just create the yeah, I got it. container. Yeah. In there is a difference means uh, we, here we can uh, uh, container we can do on image and everything yes everything here but uh, only Jenkins you have to need a different type of um, uh, git one repository everything this is uh, no, not in in single unit I think it's not the single it's here not, container yeah it's not single unit it's not single unit it is required lots of uh, setup see first thing is yeah. We create the applications because the tool itself has to be integrated with lots of other tools and so git github actually okay. will have a different server it is not a container based right that is cloud based server again you have to set up this git and the container should connect to the internet and get download all these things to the container right and you have to be make sure that container whatever is created for jenkins should have sufficient resource availability to you because when you use github your project will have a have, suppose one gb or two gb of project when when you execute when you execute the kind build jenkins build what will happen it will download the entire project from the github and then in the workspace local and, that, and then it will build right yes. that you have to yeah careful while doing and that is require lots of setups and you have to be do your uh, own networks creation okay let me um, show you that uh, network parts now now you understood okay. anything suppose you want yeah. to um, suppose you want to do for um, you want to uh, do a container as a tomcat tomcat container okay tomcat so web server right so you can just have a tomcat server also you can just use this tomcat to create a tomcat web server your container will have the tomcat web server uh, i'll have a project which i'll just use in the jenkins to create uh, the tomcat container and deploy the applications into the container okay using jenkins that part i'll show you once we finish this docker and kubernetes okay, okay. now what we saw let let's search for git to see if any git related uh, images are available no there is no images so docker dev to something uh, docker file deprecated six years ago ibm verified published okay lots of things you can find it you just do uh, r d um, at your home okay whatever you want to find it okay now let's talk about this docker network let me exit out from here and i showed you right docker network ls that's the default so you may get a question what is the default network and you may get uh, questions like uh, which network are you using and uh, you can say that uh, we have our inbuilt network our network engineer have created the networks and we are using that networks to uh, create the to um, uh, use the networks to, for the containers but by default, what network it uses? It uses the bridge network for development purpose. For development purpose, mostly um, people are using this de default bridge network. It will not because for productions, you have some separated 
dedicated networks for there okay then you have to use it now let's see what are the other options available for this networks hyphen hyphen help you'll find so to it's this is docker network connect connect a container to a network if you want to connect a container to a specific network then you can select this connect command so what is the other options with this connect you can just go for connect just see the manual place and you can find see when you see this docker network connect you can provide the ip address hyphen hyphen ip it is a string you have to provide the ip address of the network if you have to provide the ip address of the network which network you want to connect and the alias you can provide a give a alias name to the network like your bridge network we have our host non similarly you can give a alias to the given alias to the network and if you want to create a network you can just see what are the options to create the network okay. i'm not going to create anything now create a network you can use to create this network also okay and if you want to inspect something so there are other options available uh, inspect ls remove the network if you have created a network and if you want to remove it you can use rm to remove it if you want to disconnect a container from the network you can use disconnect so let's inspect the default bridge network let's see what are there inside okay if i use docker network inspect okay and if you want to find the ip address you can find it over here okay you have to inspect the network that will be a question how to find out the ip address of the container of the network you can see you can use network inspect command and just give the network id it's called please see you'll get all this subnet this is the ip address right subnet and you can find it out here uh, all these um, mac ip addresses ip people all these addresses right ip address and all and also to make it simpler we can just use grape command image grape command and uh, you can just type in i ip or you can just give grape ip okay so it will give you the ip address see you can use unix uh, so, as in the pipe uh, sorry randit uh, yeah. sir Mm -hmm. uh, doubt. Actually, uh, the IP address for, for the bridge network and the IP address of the container uh, are both are same. Uh, um, exactly, it will be same because that network is attached to the container. Okay, now our container is container. running, right? Let me get the container and inspect it. Okay, so Docker uh, container and uh, <coughs> yes. So this is the container, right? Let me inspect it. Docker container inspect, inspect uh, container right. right. And just give grape right. IP. See, one it is the uh, 172 17 0 0.2. 172 17 0 0.2. Yeah. The same because that network is attached yeah. to the container, right? That container is attached to this network. Mm -hmm. So that container will use the IP address of the priest of the network of that network because through this network only we are connected to the outside network, right? Container. Yeah. So this container we connect to this network and this will work as a network. That's why when your network engineer or network people will create the networks because you should know how the subnets is created, how the IP addresses will be designed, how uh, the subnet mask you need for your company okay which are the ip addresses you'll get all these details and the network will be created and then you can attach to the so that's why i told you whenever uh, companies are doing r d and all these things they just install docker and use the default bridge network that will work for everything and you will just have to create all the details and then you can um once the containers and images are ready then you can seek into the production environment while in the production environment when you create the container then you have to attach the container using this network connect 
using the network connect and you have to provide the IP addresses of the container and all this so you can connect to the network. Okay, that is all about this network and there are a lot more things to do um, in the network sections. Okay, if you want to just go through and or else what you can do just go to the documentations. Okay, uh, search for the uh, let's start it with guides. Uh, okay. <coughs> And if you have to search for Ranjit, one small question in uh, our real time project uh, uh, in company in on the network basis, what type of UV configuring there? Uh, see, this is what uh, overlay network that's called overlay network. Okay, um, see, that is totally different. Normally, what happens the whenever you are just going to work <coughs> in the real time. As I told the development environment, if you are going to test something and you do, you can use the bridge network. Or if you have a development okay. network is there, then you can attach to that and you can work it. Okay. But companies there are using mm -hmm. Kubernetes to create a cluster. They are using cluster, okay. a cluster mechanism. We are not using simple single network and all. They will be using the cluster things and that is totally different. See, in Docker, we have Docker Swab. Docker Swarm one concept is there that is for okay. actually to manage multi containers like orchestration container or that is called okay. orchestration this is totally different okay. you have to create different cluster different network yeah, that is totally uh, it's a vast course and vast <laughs> knowledge you have to gain for that okay uh, that uh -huh. oh, yeah yeah we have to call will I'll show you a little bit on uh, Kubernetes classes how we can create the cluster I'll show you how we can create our own cluster and how we attach to the network. Everything I'll show you. Don't worry. Okay. I'll create a, okay. in Kubernetes. I'll create a network also. I'll create a simple network and I'll show you how we can attach to the network. Okay. Now, what we are going to uh, learn now. So we are good into the networks now. Let's see about uh, in the beginning of the class. What I told um, to persist the data, right? So what happens here? So when we created this created a simple Apache server, what happened there? Uh, let me terminate this. We don't need this. Let me terminate this and uh, Docker container. And you, when you do practice only, you will remember all these commands immediately, or else you have to again go to the manual page and find it out what you needed. So I just terminated uh, this one, and I'm going to use same uh, Apache server, and uh, because that's very easy and lightweight to do all this. Uh, practical work right that's why I mostly uh, prefer to use Apache server now what I'm going to do now um, quickly I'll create one applications using index.html and uh, we'll see how we can persist those data locally in the local machines okay now let's quickly do that what I'm going to do okay before that before that let me just explain about the docker volume Okay, so as I told, uh, we have to store the data in, uh, in the host machines, right? So uh, as I told, right, we have to store all this in our local machines. So we have to create a volume for that. We have to create a volume for that. And the volume is nothing but your a, a volume space inside your host machines. Okay, so what is the command to use that one? Let's use the Docker volume is the management command as i showed you just to ls so by default it has the local driver and volume is the volume okay so let's create our own volume okay let's create our own volume if i use docker volume just use hyphen hyphen help so there are a few 45 commands are there. Create, inspect, rm, ls, so on. Okay, let's create one volume. Okay, it's very simple to create a volume. Use Docker volume create, sorry, Docker volume, volume create, and use the volume name. Okay, I can use anything. Suppose my vol, hit enter. What happened here? It just created a volume. Just list out the volumes. Volume ls. Good. I have a local driver volume and volume name is my vol. 
now its main wall is the volume name and when i create the container attached to this volume what will happen the data will be stored into this volume but where exactly the path where exactly the data is getting stored that we need to find it out right then you have to use the inspect command display the detailed information on one or more volumes right just use docker volume okay inspect then volume name suppose my vol good now you can see it here when it is created what is the driver it is used and the mount path this is the path where your data will be stored where your data will be stored you can if you if you don't know the path then you can inspect the volume and you can find the path okay now <clears throat> let me create the container quickly okay docker container docker container and uh, use the run hyphen t hyphen hyphen just give a name uh, equal to old paragraph suppose paragraph i use the latest version okay instead of the okay so our image is our container is now created and i used http the latest version and it is created if i go here and refresh this page it will have it works see so we got new container okay now what happens i am just going to create one file right we have this index.html already there so how i will copy this to the container and where i should okay this is very nice example and that's very uh, good requirement i'm going to tell you and you have to now tell me what i have to do i want to copy this so while copying this what command should i use and where to copy how i'll know i have to copy to the home path of the apache server so what is the home path of apache container how i'll know that anyone can of you tell I already have told all these previous classes. I have here and the last time you used the cp cp command, no? Yes. I yeah, use. cp command for to copy. Yeah. <coughs> use Sorry, Rana. Yes, I'll use cp to copy. But ah. where to copy? How I'll know? I want to copy to the Apache server home path. Hmm where the application path uh -huh. st docs path right how i know the exact path where should i copy it what i need to do that to get the because the index uh, the, uh, sorry then sorry please go ahead yeah okay so simple things guys you have to inspect the container just inspect the container and you'll find one working directory you'll find work directory right yeah, yeah. correct so simple just inspect the container this is the container and i'm going to inspect it okay docker container inspect container id okay suppose i need the working directory okay see this work directory and uh, we'll have this okay var leave docker overlay to this is not working i have to do working directory it will work okay working directory so you have to find the working directory so working directory is our nothing but your apache local apache so user local apache 2 this is the path where i need to copy it but apache 2 is the main folder and in apache 2 we have st docs which contains the index file either you can log in to the two things you can do it you can grab the working directory you can find the working directory by inspecting the container or 
you can go inside the container and see what path we need to copy okay now let me copy this to this working directory and uh, stdocs docker container cp docker spelling the net oh sorry okay docker right. docker container cp and then the file which file i do i need to copy index.html okay and keep the container id uh, just give the container id just copy something and colon give the path right you have to provide this path you know how to use that you should know okay then st docs this is the folder where i need to copy this index.html file our application file hit enter now it is copied if i go here and refresh so our application is now changed okay what happened here i just placed my application in the container okay if the container is tired and i recreate the container so what will happen it will go to the default application that our application will not be there okay now let me quickly do that okay container okay rm hyphen f let me remove this container quickly okay now i removed it let me recreate it i created and it get me it got me new container id okay so if i go here and refresh this page what happened my application is totally lost now whatever the previous application yeah, yeah. is there so how i can persist this one so now what i have to do we have to use the volume okay we have to use the volume to do that okay how will attach this volume to the container okay that is simple things when you use we have to use one hyphen v option and then container id the which container id you are going to run while creating the this happens when you create the container that time you have to pass the volume okay and the container directory let's see how we can do that how we can achieve it okay let me quickly do sorry let me quickly delete this and we have to get the deleted this time what i have to do here wait zero stdpd what i have to do here i have to pass i have to attach the volume to the container so i have to use hyphen v okay and you have to give the volume name so you know how to get the volume um docker volume ls it will display the volume details so my volume is my volume name is my vol okay now what you have to use it here you have to give colon my vol colon and the container path where you want to attach the volume this is suppose i want to give st docs i want to give st docs okay what happened here i just attached this volume the volume is has a path to the st docs okay <coughs> now hit enter so it created new container now okay now if i refresh it so our application is running now what we have to do the simpler way just do docker volume and inspect get the volume path okay inspect this volume and we need to copy our normal unix copy cp index.html and put the file in this path got it i just copied i did not copy to the container i just copied this index html to this volume to this mount path let's see what will happen refresh it see it's there yeah, yeah now what we'll do i'll delete the container now 
I'll delete the container Docker <coughs> container rm hyphen f and delete this container. Okay, the container is now deleted. If I refresh it, it's not there. Okay, now I have to recreate the container. Just to recreate the container. Container is now created, but this time I have given the volume. And this volume is having my new application, right? If I refresh it here, see got it right. You can use volume to store all your data. Okay, now and another good thing I'll show you, another other ways I'll show you. Let me go inside the container. So this container is now running, right? Let me go inside this container. So Docker container exec hyphen it hyphen lt new container id bin bus okay. okay so working directory is Apache 2 uh, let me go to st docs okay uh, cd st docs so our index file is there right let me create a small file here I'll just touch T O U C H test I created this file inside the container okay I created this file inside the container now let me go to this volume path in my host okay let me exit out from the container now in my machine my host I'll go to the volume path let's see what's there see Test me .txt also in my local laptop on my local machine. I added, the, I created the file in the container. So how it is happened? Because this volume is attached to the path. This path, whatever you store it here, it will be reflect here. Whatever you store it here, because that path is mounted to this volume. Okay, this is the volume path. Now you clearly understand how you have to persist this and how we can save the data. Okay, that's one thing. And another thing is when you change something to the container, right? And I want to create an image out of that container. I have to create an image out of that container. Okay, so let me show you that. That is one commit. Uh, commit, 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 commit. Okay. Okay, to create image out of a container, to create image out of a container, what you have to use docker commit container id repository name image name and tag. This is you need to understand how I'm going to do. Let me show you. So my container is now so, running. So Ranjit, this is the reverse uh, one. Like we are from image, we are creating container. Now from container, we will uh, create the image yes but why we need this okay. these things to do that's the that's the point to understand why we need maybe to retaining the data no? uh okay yes that's some um, true but sometimes what happened you might have done some ad hoc changes to your container by copying some library by copying some files and you want to persist that and um, that that you have to create an image out of that and next time when you create the container it's you should not do the same thing again because you can use that image to create the container again that time that's that's why you need it and that is the ad hoc basis you have to do but the best way to do is to create a docker file that's create your own image whatever the necessary you have to do you have to modify in the template itself that is the best practice and that is what we follow in the organization whatever we do work we changes to the image template that i'll show you when i'll um, just uh, you know uh, teach you about the 
face and of your own image. Let me quickly do what I'm going more deftly. That's why you are getting more time. Actually, we have a lot more to complete. Uh, this should not go beyond that. I'm just going more deftly. That's what yeah, yeah. Okay, let me quickly finish this one. Uh, so you can just use Docker. Okay, and uh, you can use commit. Okay, give the commit um, a container ID. So what is the container ID? Uh, what is the container ID? This is the container ID. Mm -hmm. It's container ID. Okay. What else? Then you have to give the repository name. So what is this repository name? I I had told you you have to create your own repository, right? So my repository name is uh, Docker for Ranjit, I believe. So let's do that. So I mean, so. Okay, Docker for Ranjit. Continue. Sort. Okay. So Docker for Ranjit is my repository name. So what I have to do, I have to use here Docker for Ranjit. Okay, then colon or slash. Then you have to give the image name. So but this is the HTTPD because this container is running Apache server. I just gave HTTPD and I gave one version name is HTTPD. Suppose I gave uh, something um, which will be uh, like HTTPD, I'll give RS. Uh, HTTPD RS, okay, dot 1.2.12, uh, okay. This is the tag I'm going to create the image out of that okay now hit enter good one image is created now i created an image out of the container so what is the image docker image ls see the repository name is this and the tag latest okay so i gave the repository name as this uh, which is wrong the tag i'll show you how you can provide the tag this is the wrong way I created. It should be gave us colon. Okay, let me remove this image. Okay, uh, it should be colon. I gave dot. That's why it gave the name repository name and created tag as latest. But we don't need latest tag. Okay, Docker image rm. It's deleted. So instead, it should be colon. <coughs> okay. Now it will create a tag as 1.2.12. Okay, Docker image ls. See, the tag is created as 1.2.1. So this is my image name, Docker for Ranjit HTTPD RS. Okay, now what I'm going to do quickly, terminate. Okay, the container is running, right? Uh, this one is, uh, yeah, this one is running. Uh, let me terminate this container quickly and uh, Docker container RM. Then now, what I have to do now, I am going to use the image which is I created out of the container. Okay, so let's do that. Docker. Mm, okay, let's inspect the image first. Docker image okay inspect or you can find uh, hyphen hyphen help let's see what are the commands are there we have inspect also there right to know more details about the image inspect the image id suppose this is the image created right let's keep image id so let's see <coughs> working directory path is given here Apache 2 and uh, all these details. Okay, and let's see. Okay, this is the image tag used. And uh, I'm just seeing what are the details are available here. Apache 2 signals. Okay, fine. Let's create the container out of this image. Okay. So, Docker. 
Okay, now I'm going to use Docker container run then hyphen g. Okay, quickly I'll do that. Hyphen zero colon h zero. Give the image. So this is the image I'm going to use. Color one point. 2.12 hit enter now my container is created go here and refresh it it is the what it copied it just get the container details but the data is not copied so you have to use the hyphen b options to persist it my web up one so I can be then you have to use my wall equal to then you have to pass the volume again. Okay. So you have to inspect the volume and give the path and then it will get it. So this is how what happens? We created this and we got the image. But one thing we noticed here the data which available inside the container it did not added into the image template it did not add it into the image template so in the next class i'll show you how we can add that into the image template how we can add the image template so that it will persist the data whatever is there in the application we have deployed that i'll show you in the image template creation so everything we now created so one more thing i just want to tell you quickly that is to create your own image uh, like out of that that like that i created one image right i want to push that image to the docker hub so first thing we have what we have to do we have to create login to the docker okay this part don't worry this part i'll just show you when we'll create our inbuilt image okay to login to the docker and then whatever the image we uh, created just now right uh, let me just control c it docker image so this is the image we created just now right i want this image to be pushed to my repository so that i can find it over here okay if i go here my profile so that i should have this image available here okay that to next class i'll show you uh, maybe next class on tuesday right tuesday will meet up and that will be very important class and we need to understand the docker file and that is where the real development of image starts how we can create your own image okay. what organizations they do we do actually we create our own images by using the base image we create our own image and use that image to deploy the applications by using docker file the concept docker file so next class will cover entirely docker file and i'll show you how to push these images here and docker file i'll try to quickly finish it in the one class and in another class will quickly finish the docker compose okay two things are pending now docker file and docker compose and that's very important and that's the advanced one that's the advanced one okay docker, docker file and docker compose tomorrow next class we'll finish docker file next to next class we'll finish docker compose okay so we can discuss now any questions if you have or we can wind up the class and we'll meet on tuesday